pizza here in the United States is one of those things that, especially if your city's known for it, people tend to fight to the death over. And perhaps there's no better gleaming example of this than the city of New Haven, Connecticut. Connecticut, connect a cut. It's a small to medium sized state right up there in New England. Maybe you're asking yourself, how did such a tiny town of less than 200,000 people garner such a praised and beloved position in the American pizza conversation? Well, that has to do with a long standing history, uh, long standing in American standards, of course, which includes the story of an influx of pizza loving Italian immigrants who came to the States back in the day. But first, let's talk about the pizza and how you can make it at home, or as they call it in New Haven, a beats. I read old articles, read forums, and even watched a full-length documentary all about New Haven pizza, but lucky for me, I have a primary source and friend who just so happens to have experience in this department. All right, Max, the meat guy, let's go. Our East Coast connection. You are in Connecticut right now? Yes, sir. Good to be here. Right Thank on. you for having me. Dude, of course, my man. Thanks for being here. So, New Haven-style pizza, what sets it apart? Well, it's funny you mention that. I actually have two right here. Man. <laughs> Any excuse yeah. to get pizza, I'm going for it. <laughs> Which one is this? So here we have a cheese. As you can see, I may have taken a slice or two. Pretty big pizza, round dish. Most notably, check out that undercarriage. Great oh, shot. Oh man, okay. Wood fired ovens probably, huh? Wood fired ovens to the front. Looks oh, really yeah. crispy, relatively thin. I can tell you it is delicious. Okay, so you got the cheese though. So what's underneath that? I hear, I hear there's some pretty wacky signature flavors out east. You are right about that. I was a little skeptical about this one, I'm gonna be honest, but once again, All I right. did take a bite and it looks pretty bomb. We got lemon wedges. I should probably okay. use them. Why don't I go for a little? <laughs> oh yeah. Is there cheese on there? There is cheese. Okay. So this is the clam white sauce one. So there's cheese, yeah. that white sauce. Um, I was sort of expecting like whole belly clams. It looks like it's more just strips. That looks nice. Maybe chopped clams, huh? It looks like it. All right, Max, in a nutshell, New Haven pizza, traits, characteristics, go. A New Haven style pizza, to sum it all up, extremely hot oven, they cook very fast. Relatively thin, but a really nice char. Simple, but well thought out ingredients. Even though we have that nice char, it's still nice and chewy, so you get that balance of both. That is one thing about this, it's, it's not like a super crackery pizza. It's actually a bit right. chewy once you get through that initial char. Relatively light on the toppings, just one or two, and absolutely delicious. <laughs> a beats. A pizza. Let me get a beats. <laughs> I still can't pronounce it right. A beats. A beats. <laughs> oh yeah, dude. New Haven, Connecticut style a beats. The dough is super simple: flour, water, salt, yeast. That's it. The magic comes from the oven. Start the dough by adding 3 grams of fresh yeast to 510 grams of warm water in the bowl of a stand mixer. Just mix that all up by hand and let it sit and activate for about 5 minutes. In a separate bowl, sprinkle 17 grams of kosher salt over the 750 grams of bread flour and, again, mix things up by hand. Once the yeasty water is bubbly, pour the flour salt mixture over the water, then attach the dough hook to the stand mixer and stir things around for about 15 seconds, just until things come together into a shaggy mess. Stop the machine and let the dough rest for 20 minutes. This step is called the auto lease and it's gonna help the dough get a jump start on gluten formation. After 20 minutes, run the mixer on medium-high speed until the dough balls up into a smooth, shiny blob thing. It should be very supple and very elastic. Because we auto-lease the dough, this should take anywhere from 6 to 8 minutes, so pretty quick. Lube up a big bowl with some olive oil for the dough to ferment in, then dust a clean work surface with some all-purpose flour and turn the dough blob onto the table. <laughs> All we're doing now is shaping the dough into a tight round ball to help it rise during fermentation. And remember, this is a wet dough, so feel free to use plenty of flour. This is what I mean when I say elastic. Notice how easily the dough stretches and doesn't split or break. This is well-developed gluten. Transfer Z dough ball to the oiled bowl, cover with plastic wrap, and let ferment at room temp for five to seven hours or until basically it's quadrupled in size. All right, so New Haven style sauce is just as simple as New Haven style dough, right? It's literally tomatoes, oregano, and salt. Here I have a 28 ounce can of the world famous San Marzano tomatoes from Italy. They come peeled and canned in tomato puree. 
Now, I prefer to use the whole tomatoes, then take them down to the desired consistency for ultimate, ultimate control. control. Take the tomatoes out of their sauce and place them in the food processor. All right, so you can use any oregano you want. Technically, classic New Haven style calls for dry oregano. I also happen to have fresh oregano, and I'm just usually a fan of fresh herbs over the dry variety, like most of the time, so I'm gonna use fresh. Chop up a tablespoon of fresh oregano, then toss that in with the tomatoes along with a teaspoon and a half of kosher salt to start. Usually this is done with a food mill, which leaves you with a nice chunky textured sauce. I don't have a food mill, so I'm gonna use my food processor, which many of us probably, hopefully have, and I'm just gonna pulse it so that it doesn't turn into a puree. We want texture. As you can see, the sauce could not be any easier, right? There's no reduction, you don't add any sugar, no nothing, bare bones. I actually really like it like this. Okay, we have to talk about it. New Haven style clam pie. This one was invented at a spot called Pepe's back in the 1950s or 60s, as the story goes, but I'm also sure a lot of people think otherwise. There's a fierce rivalry amongst New Haven Abit's spots. Everybody has their own go-to favorite. The big boys are Pepe's, Sally's, and Modern, just to name a few. Regardless of pizza lore, this topping combo is actually incredibly delicious. We're gonna use a clam knife to carefully shuck enough clams until you have about a half cup of the meat, then run through them once with your knife, leaving some pieces whole and others chunky for variety. These are cherry stone clams that I bought from a fish market. It. Subscribe to the channel, dude, for sure. Uh <laughs> Real pecorino imported from Italy. Yes, pecorino romano cheese. This stuff is super salty, sharp sheep's milk cheese. You can sub for parm if that's what you got, but let me tell you, this stuff is different. If you can find it, grab yourself some. Next, the finely chopped garlic. We're going for a super rough chop here. There's about 20 cloves in there, and that's overkill, yes, but in this case, it's better to have more toppings than not enough, you know? Then, of course, for garnish, we're gonna have some fresh chopped parsley. Just chop that up, set it aside. All right, so our dough's been fermenting for about five, six hours-ish. Uh, it's gonna take a little longer if it's colder, so like in the winter, it'll take longer, but it's pretty warm today, it's pretty humid, so we ready. Check it out. I also made a ton of extra dough too, so. Now that the dough is finished with its first stage of development, we're going to pre-shape it. Dust your surface with plenty of flour because remember this is a wet dough, then measure it out. My recipe makes enough dough for either four 12 inch pies or three 14 to 16 inch pies. If you'd like to make these smaller 12 inch pizzas, measure out four balls that weigh 320 grams each. If you'd like to make a larger pie, measure out roughly 425 gram balls. Regardless of what you decide to do, the shaping technique is very simple. Use your hands to pull the dough over itself so that you're left with a smooth ball, pinch the back closed, plop it on the bench, and use your fingers to pull the dough back to create surface tension. The more tactile strength the dough has, the better it's gonna rise. I'm using these nifty proofing boxes, just like you'll find at bakeries or pizza joints. These are just a lot smaller than the actual professional ones, perfect for fitting into a tight domestic fridge. The benefit here is that you can fit a lot of dough into each box, then stack them on top of each other. And no, you don't need these. A sheet tray and plastic wrap or a Tupperware container will work just fine, but if you plan on making a lot of pizza, I'd say it's worth a small investment. I shall leave a link below. Cover the dough, then transfer it to the fridge to chill and develop overnight. I just got a very, very special, very cool new toy just for this video, actually, so let's go check it out downstairs. In New Haven, the abits is shaped by hand, and there are many techniques to do so, but I found that an easy and effective one is to use your fingers and the pads of your fingers to push the dough down and out, sort of like in a tree shape. Before starting, make sure that you pull the dough from the fridge to let it warm up at least an hour, preferably two hours, before you're gonna cook. Cold dough is really hard to work with because it tends to snap back easily when you try to shape it. Okay, very important. Before you build the pizza, be sure to get it on the peel. Here I have some coarse semolina flour, which sort of acts like ball bearings to help the dough slide on and off the peel, whereas normal all-purpose flour might just, you know, get sticky. For a 12-inch pie, spoon on about three ounces or one and a half of these tiny little ladles worth of sauce. Less is more here. We don't want a wet pizza. This first abits is what's known in New Haven as a plain or sometimes tomato pie. All we gotta do is tomato sauce, a little dried oregano, and olive oil. Some people add pecorino, which is delicious and totally optional. You can do that if you want to. Plain pie. 
Traditionally, this style of pie are cooked in large wood-fired ovens, which are massive, they can do like 10 pies at a time. Though this Ghazni dome is a badass backyard oven, it's really not that big, and the good news is that it gets really hot. Hot enough to give us charred crust and caramelized cheese for that classic New Haven style and its signature look. It's important to keep movement on the pizzas because there are hot spots in the oven. You can use your hands, or if you have one, a turning peel to rotate the pizza about every 30 seconds or so to avoid any excess burning. There's a fine line between burnt and charred abis. We want a relatively flat pie with char marks in the middle, on the crust, and definitely on the bottom. Alright, one thing you can do if your dough is pulling back on you, if it's cold and pulling back on you, just let it chill. Let it chill for a couple of minutes, let it rest, it'll loosen up and get be easier to work with. Now, shaping by hand is fun, and it's the authentic technique to learn when talking about a beats. However, it can definitely be challenging to get these pies to stay flat. So, I figured out a couple of tricks that you can try to maintain that signature flat New Haven style crust. It might break some rules, but it works. If you're having trouble with your dough being a little too puffy, you can dock it. This is a docker, right? Basically, it punches little holes in the dough, and this keeps it from rising, or at least it helps it rise a lot less. Dough docking is a good idea for any thin crust pizza. Once that's done, go ahead and dust up the peel, lay on the dough, and build once again. Now, I've learned that in New Haven, you're not gonna go around and order a cheese pizza, right? They don't know what that is over there. I've learned it's called moots, aka mozzarella, aka mozzarella, aka mozzarella. Pop some of that on there, along with a healthy dusting of Pecorino Romano cheese, dried oregano, and olive oil. Then it's into the heat dungeon. A 12 inch pie like this should be turned three to four times and take anywhere from three to five minutes to fully cook. It's hot in there, this happens fast, watch your pizza. Now, I'm not gonna front here. It took me a few tries to get this right, which also meant that we had a ton of leftover pizza. But lucky for me, and the squad of construction workers nearby was quite hungry, and there were also a couple neighbors walking around, so we fed the block. Knock, knock. How you doing, man? Good, how are you? I got some extra pizza. That's for you, my friend. Thank you, I appreciate it. We got all this thank stuff, you. there's plates underneath. All thank right. you guys, thank, thank you. Good job, thank you. I understand most people watching might not have an outdoor oven to cook on, so I want to show you guys how you can make an abits inside using a regular oven in a pizza stone or steel. Again, as I mentioned with the dough docking, you're not going to see any spots in New Haven whip out a rolling pin either. It's all done by hand there. However, if you're having trouble with thickness, there's no shame in the game. The rollout dock combo is undefeated for making thin pizza. Also, unlike other styles, New Haven pizza is not always a perfect circle. Matter of fact, most of the time it's not. So no worries if your pie is slightly deformed and misshapen, it just adds to the character. Notice this pie is slightly bigger. I wanted to show you guys the difference between the 12 inch smaller pizzas and this 16 incher. Last but certainly not least, we've been talking about it all day, the classic New Haven style clam abits. We're gonna start by laying on fresh clams, then drizzling over the olive oil, make it rain that chopped garlic, add a pinch of dried oregano, and be generous with the Pecorino Romano. Then onto a hot pizza stone it goes in a 500 degree oven that's been preheating for at least an hour. We're gonna use a peel to turn the pie. Just like our outdoor fire oven, be sure to give it some turns. This pizza takes about seven to eight minutes to fully cook. But you know, it doesn't always make sense to go by time, so just make sure that it's nice and browned and starting to char. Then once your abits has some nice leoparding, as they call it, on the bottom of the pie and all around, turn on the broiler and let it ride for one to two more minutes, or just until that crust and cheese are charred and crispy. Bada boom, that is clam abits. Yeah, this is maybe the weirdest part about pizza in New Haven, and when I say it's cut differently, I mean like, you know, how Jason might treat one of his co-eds having an unwelcome stay at Camp Crystal Lake. New Haven style pizza really did quickly climb to the top ranks of my favorite pizzas of all time, and I live in a place that's pretty known for pizza, there's plenty of great pizza everywhere, so I was pretty surprised. Uh, beats. New Haven might be a tiny little town, but boy, does their pizza have a lot of personality. After all, Yale is right around the corner from a lot of these very famous New Haven style pizza joints and uh, those guys tend to know a thing or two about most things. 
The next episode, we are heading down to the East Coast to a tiny little state called Delaware. If you think you know what we're making, as usual, comment it below. Also guys, I pretty much said this ad nauseum, uh, in other words, a lot, but my website is up and running, which means that you can go see all the recipes written out that we talk about here on this channel and from Instagram and TikTok there. So check it out. I know a lot of you guys prefer to just read a whole written out recipe and follow that and sort of watch the video as you cook. Others like to watch the video for the recipe, so I'm really trying to accommodate everyone. If you have any feedback for how I can do that, how I could be better at that, also comment that below, shoot me a DM, just let me know some way. That would be very nice of you. Thank you so, so much for watching. Thank you for being a part of the Omnivore Nation, and I will see you next time.